let's see here. What's happening? How's everyone doing? We're off and running. Everyone's having a fantastic Friday, wherever you are in the world. We've got, I see we got some usual suspects in here. Motion bug. You see a little comics legend. What's going on? What's going on, Hanny? Uh, it's been a while since I've streamed here. It's been a long time. Oh, man, you already want the look up here, huh? <clears throat> What's going on, Winston? Welcome. Welcome. All right, so uh, I'm going to start these streams off in 2021 with a project. So um, I'm teaming up with uh, Miniac. Uh, so for those that don't know here, let me... This is a, a gentleman, Scott Walter. He's got an amazing YouTube channel about painting miniatures in essence like he sits there uh and does a lot of painting a lot of great tips you should go check out his videos they're they're fun if you if you like my crazy and quirkiness you'll like scott because he's my kind of guys and he's just a little, he, he's cut from the same cloth and pretty much so anyways he he and his channel paints miniatures that's what he does right what's going on chris styles so what we're going to do is we're going to team up a little bit and i want to show how actually you could make a miniature in ZBrush. So for my streams happening here at the Pixelogic from here until I hand off to Scott, what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna sculpt, as you can see, probably see from my reference, I'm gonna sculpt like a Banshee vampire woman that's gonna be in some kind of armor, all right? And I'm gonna do it from beginning to end in these streams. So you guys are going along with me on these. And in, eventually then if you guys wanna make your own, you can make your own. I'm also going to go through the process of printing it, and I'm going to print it off on my Form 2 that I have. And then once I've done that, I'm going to be handing that off to Scott at Miniac, and then he's going to do a video of how you would hand paint uh, something like this. So you guys can get the overall feel and flow of something that you would do, in, in essence, making miniatures. Because I, I, th I think the miniature world's a lot of fun. Like the cool characters you can get in there, too. People, what people are doing is pretty awesome. So obviously this is also going to touch bases on just many things also to deal with 3D printing, um, special rules that you got to be paying attention to and things you got to watch out for, uh, especially on a miniature scale. There's even more you got to look out for compared to, you know, my last project that I did was, as you can see, there's my finished gremlin that I actually 3D printed, hand painted right there over my shoulder. So that's 24 inches. There's... That's a different world than dealing with miniatures, right? So we're going to just, as, as I like to say, buckle up, click in your seatbelts. We're going to go for uh, a ride. And uh, from here on out, that's what I'm going to be doing until we get this project done. So this should be a lot of fun um, for us all. Okay, and then as usual, I'm here for you guys. We all know how I like to operate, right? We all know we like to throw some tangents in here from time to time. So I'm back full scale with my graphics working. You know, we got Inception tangents if we need them to. Don't you worry. Okay, so I'm here for you. Let's do this. Let's walk through this all together. Um, and the first thing I want to start with in this stream is where do I start in essence? How do I start going at this and thinking about this character that I'm trying to do, right? And seeing I'm doing a female... Zebra ships with a female, so I'm going to use it, all right? So this is, I'm also doing this on purpose in the sense that you guys later on can just go and watch this video and follow along in your own ZBrush or do your own, okay? So here you go. So this is actually inside a ZBrush. So when you open up Lightbox in the uh, tool palette right here, okay, this is what I loaded. Her name's Julie. Hi, Julie. Right? So that's, that's all I'm loaded, okay, is that's it. So I'm just going to load her. Now, her in particular, she's obviously got multiple sub tools. I don't need any of these sub tools, right? I don't, I don't need the hair because I'm gonna do my own hair in essence, and then we can keep the teeth in the eyes. So let's get rid of the hair. I'm gonna do my. It's gonna look funny. It's gonna look funny because she's, yeah, she's bald, and then I don't need the swimsuit because she's not going swimming. Well, sure, okay. And then what do now is. Get a little bit of topology here for what I want to do on this piece. Hold on, I think my, I want to see something. I think my touch, I want to make sure my touch is off. Okay, there we go. It was on. I don't want my touch on. 
So I'm going to just first start with, uh, I'm going to position her a little bit more. So I'm going to mask off her, um, I want to mask off her arms. So here's something to pay attention obviously to is right now you can see I can switch to a brush and nothing has happened. Okay. The reason is, is I'm using spotlight for referencing right now. So if you're going to do that in your brush samples to turn off the projection ability here. Okay. So you want to make sure you have that. Uh, so we're freezing. Um, am I freezing for everybody right now? Because, hold on, let me check. Since everyone's saying I'm frozen. That's interesting. Hold on, let me check my feed on my side here. Because on my side, everything's good to go. At least from what I see. Hold on, let me go in. Take a look here. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see, am I still I'm connected? Hi. Okay, so am I still frozen? So is, is it frozen for everybody? I'm rotating my model, I'm moving my model. I see you guys are here. I'm freezing indeed. Hmm, let me see. Let me see, let me see, uh, let me, let me kill some stuff here then. Hold on, let me just check and see why all of a sudden we went from being fine to streaming. I have internet, uh, cause I can get to the stream. Hold on, let me. Okay, let me mute it. Let me see, I'm looking at the stream now and seeing where we're at. Yeah, yeah. Okay, not freezing here, my voice is fine. I'm seeing a lot of that. Of course, the first stream for 2021 for me. Why not? Okay, on my side, it's looking fine now. Okay, better now? Because watching the stream, it seems to be fine from my side. I'm gonna turn that off so I'm not wasting bandwidth. Okay, it seems to be fine for me, right? Everyone's good? Let's continue on the journey here. Okay, okay, good. All right, so <clears throat> back to her. So again, I just loaded her, and again, I threw images in here that are kind of just getting me for a reference okay so i gotta turn that samples again i gotta turn that samples on over here the spotlight projection okay and i gotta turn that off because i don't want to use the images to project right now so i just want to start with her so then i'm going to switch to this old tool right there's the gizmo right which i want to now in symmetrically i want to look at this right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually use something else I want to I want to start using this right so we're going to start working on looking at our arms a little bit and saying all right let's just move her arms just a smidge so I used to like explain this as um, a bone that's how I used to use the transpose line I use the gizmo definitely a lot more but for something like this, I just want to, I'm going to put a little more space in her arms since I'm making some kind of armor, right? So I'm just going to rotate her arms out just a bit, not a ton. And let me get a, I'm going to get a better mask than, than that for sure. So I'm going to go more up from the shoulders. Uh, let's go more in there, right around there. Okay, good enough and then rotate it. I just want a little bit of rotation. I just want to get a little bit of some space in there, okay? She's got layers, so I'm just gonna bake them all so I don't have to worry about layers. I'm just giving her a little bit more volume to her, just quickly, because she's a, she's good, she's a banshee. She's, she's got power, okay? So, we're starting with just a simple, simple mesh, okay? So I'm gonna divide this up a little bit so that we get some topology here. So 
I want to give it at least where she's a little bit smoother like this. Okay, and then I'm going to delete higher and lowers because I want to work on this in a different sense and designing out um, what I'm planning to do for her armor, right? It's, there's many ways we could do this. So I'm going to show you guys multiple ways. What's up, Fluff? What's up, Fluffy Panda? How are you? Okay, so <clears throat> there's, I'm going to show you more than one way, okay, in essence. So the first way that's really fast for me and it's going to be probably the fastest. I'm going to re-polygroup this. So she's all one. Is I want to put like some kind of neck brace thing on here. So obviously just masking something off really quick. And this is why I divide it up a little bit. Okay. I wanted to have um, enough topology to kind of create something that I'm going to use down the line. Right. And then it's so easy to refine the pieces here and my goal here is just to kind of just get something that would be cool and again we're making I'm making armor for her right so I want to be able to just design wise go really quick here and just figure out what do I want this to look like uh, I definitely don't want that I want it to smooth around to the back a little bit something more like that Okay, and you know maybe we will also put a little bit of winging on here. So in essence, I'm doing this because I want this thing to kind of represent almost like wings, if you will, like a bat since it's a vampire, right? Makes makes some sense to do that. So, and then I'm gonna keep building armor for her around that. So this is gonna be part of her armor, is what I'm going for for this. Okay, so just giving a little look like that, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this down a little bit more. Nin -nin 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 -nin. That's what it's making me think of right now. Something like that, right? So there's many ways I can go about doing this. Okay, so the fastest way is obviously going to be extracting this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I got a mask here. Okay, on the model, I'm going to go into the sub tools and we're going to extract this. Just click it. Okay, that's, that's a little aggressive. That's a little too aggressive. So I'm going to change some value here and go with a little bit not so aggressive. And I am I have things down the pipeline that I'm going to do to this. So I'm just trying to get, in essence, some kind of base mesh right now for me. That's what I'm trying to do right here. Okay, so I'm going to accept that. And now we've got this armor piece, right? Sitting there, it's gonna go along her neck. So I wanna start now making some stuff for her shoulders as well, okay? Um, and as far as getting masking, like as far as getting defined masking, yeah, you can bring any image in that you want and define that as a mask. You could even use a piece of a model, like one sub tool and use that as a mask in essence. Well, another mesh, you can use that as a mask as well because in here, you have the ability to use the intersect masker. So there is ways to get more defining of a mask, right? So if you're using this, you can switch to say, again, there's more than one way to do this. You can do mask squared and then grab an alpha. Let's just say the star. And now I want to put a star on her and you can see there's your, that's it. So for the person who was that I was asking, Henny, there you go. That's how you could do something like that, okay? You can even use images floating in spotlight to do it. Okay, so let me know if that helped. Uh, okay, hold on. Okay, so <clears throat> making straight images, straight masking. Okay, great question. All right, I'm gonna come out of perspective. So I'm just, and actually, since I'm doing something that's gonna be physically 3D printed, I don't really want to have perspective on. Because uh, I don't want any camera distortion. So whenever I'm doing my 3D printing, I don't turn my perspective on. And if I do, I'm going to have, uh, I got to find that focal length that's going to work that would be equal to your eyes. Okay. Uh, so Mr. Sanson, do you mean paint miniature in or out of ZBrush? No, painting out. So this is a project that I'm teaming up with, with Scott at Miniac, where he does hand painting miniatures. 
So I'm going to show the process of making the miniature in ZBrush, 3D printing it out, and then I'm going to hand that print off to him, that physical print, and then Scott's going to do a video of really actually hand painting. So you guys see the whole process of trying to make something like this. Okay? So <clears throat> you can't bake one uh, layer at a time. There's a plugin that exists that you can get that will do it. It's on ZBrush Central. Okay, so <clears throat> the question you guys asked about the masking as well, making clean masks, all right, so would be right here. So you can right here, mask curve is how you can get clean masks. So now if I do this, right, this is now masking off based upon what I just drew out in a line. So for example, I can do this and actually come down this way and come down the arm like that. And then now I'll get a mask like that going down her arm, right? So this is a way to do that. And then this is also going to work with like any of the brushes. Every time you tap the alt key, you're adding another point of interest and then you let go and you're good to go. This is another thing actually I'd want to highlight. If you guys look at me, look at me, look at me. There's the first one. There's the first one, right? I'm not touching the keyboard, right? Right now, the, the masking pens in action, my... My pen and my Cintiq's still there, so I don't need to touch the keyboard anymore. So if I just tap the Alt key, see, I just tapped, we're good to go. If you double tap the Alt key, you're going to make harsh points, in essence, instead of rounded points. So this is a great way to even, you know, design this way, right? So again, I can start even doing this and say, okay, I want to make some kind of, as I made, this is, we're not going Banshee right now. We're going, maybe this is going to be some kind of sci-fi piece, and I want to use, I don't know, I want to use something like this. So what I want is I want to unmask stuff, right? And then get maybe a design like that going down her body. Okay. The name of the plugin for the layers um, is, I'd have to remember, I'd have to try and find it for you. Uh, message me on ZBrush Central and I'll see if I can find it. Uh, it's called the uh, layer. I don't remember the exact name. It's been years. Okay. So that's how I would do that. And again, when I'm masking off this one, right? I'm looking at the gradient side. That's the side that gets masked, okay? And then now I'm holding the Alt key and then it's actually gonna unmask that side instead of mask that side, okay? And then the other question that's got popped up about masking that somebody asked as well is when you guys do a mask, blurring and sharpening is pretty easy, okay? So if I wanna blur the mask, now that I have a mask drawn out on her right now, I just hold down the control key and tap, up, tap, 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 and you see that'll blur it. And if you guys want to do the opposite, which could be beneficial for the workflow that we're starting to do right now, you hold control and alt, and then you tap and you see it'll get sharp. Okay, so that's going to live in a menu actually over here in masking. Okay, so you're going to have the ability right here, blur a mask, sharpen a mask. Right, you can even grow and shrink masks. Okay, there you go. So that's how you do it. Let's let's continue on this journey. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with more. Like this is really cool. I like what's happening here in this shoulder there. I'm gonna do stuff in here. I really like what's happening here. I like the crown. I'm gonna put a crown on her for sure. This is cool, but I think I'm gonna go more down the sexy armor route. Okay, I, I'm just I, I I like going that route. So I'm gonna do this chest plate right now. And the benefit is I've got a nice little rib cage that Caroline is the artist that made this original sculpt years ago. So she had put the rib cage in here. So I'm going to go and do this. And let's now also, I'm going to hide because I don't, this is the beauty of working digitally. Uh, I want it to come across. It's got to be comfortable. She's got to, she's got to go in the battle, people. She's got to go in the battle. So I'm just going to mask up something like this. Okay. And let's keep continuing this around. All right. I need to have, I want her to have movement in her arms. So that armor, I don't want it to collide with her scapula. So I'm going to make sure that is not colliding there. Okay. And we'll come across. We'll do something more like this coming in here. Do it more like that. And Coming across. There. There. Just get this built up as much as I can. Right? 
Okay, and start coming across. And let's see, looking at this, let's definitely come off. And I wanna make like sharp, like her, I want this to have some sharpness to it. I'm gonna add some other elements between the armor as well for me. I'm gonna create some pieces, maybe a necklace and uh, some pieces that I have kind of a see-through look to them in the armor as well. So they're not completely, this is why I kind of like this because I can do this and look around and see what am I getting right now, right? What what really does this look like? So this is kind of, I, I like this approach when I'm trying to just work quickly and get something out. Because I'm going to make another, I'm going to go another piece of arm in here, probably. I'm going to do something like what's going on over here, right? I'm going to do a layering of armor, I think, and I don't think... I'm gonna, and I'm going with something that has sharp angles. That's definitely something I want to carry through on what I'm making here, for sure. So I'm gonna say that's pretty good. That's not bad. Mm, I think maybe I'll come up higher with this, and then I'm on masking to really refine the shape I'm getting. Don't forget, you guys could also switch. Like this could be handy switching to like the mass circle and then masking that circle out right now one thing that i that i don't love by default for me is when you're doing this you see how that the circle's growing like and it's moving away from the point of interest for me oh, that looks pretty cool okay i don't want that so i'm going to come over and i'm holding the control key okay and i'm going to click on this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell zbrush i want it centered right here. So I'm turning on center. What that's going to do for me is now because I'm in symmetry mode, I come, they meet. So wherever my cursor is, you can see now this draws out like that. I do this all the time. I prefer doing something like that. Like that's a little too round. So I'm going more hand free, but I wanted to show that to you all because I have used that quite a bit, especially when I'm doing some hard surface stuff. I'm like, all right, I'm think I'm I think there needs to be a little bit more room in here. Just a, a touch more room. And I'm going to be doing, on this armor as we go through the stream, I'm going to be doing stuff like this down here in the corner. I'm going to put some really intricate stuff on this armor for sure. All right, so we're going to extract this now. Okay, and I say accept. And again, I'm not worried right now about if, if it's perfectly clean. I'm just trying to make some pieces right now for me to do stuff with down the line. You're gonna see here, I'm just, right now I'm designing. I'm making sure that what I'm putting together makes sense for her, like, especially for armor. It is, is she gonna be able to move, right? So I see a little bit of mass there, so I'm gonna get rid of that. I don't need that. Get, get it, get it out, get it, get it out of here. Okay, I saw a question come through. Hey, little Paul, I have a question. What is the auto color mask and auto mask brush section? How could we be able to paint realistic? human skin with it as it describes. Okay, auto, wait, auto color mask and auto mask brush section. Oh, you're talking, about, are you talking about in, okay, right, which one are you, you're talking about color masking? Is that what you're talking about? Because that's about painting and you gotta have subdivision levels for that to work. And I don't have any paint right now. So it'll use certain color to mask out in essence, so it won't paint on a certain color. That's what it's doing, right? But you, uh, for me, I usually just use the masking options over here. Like I'll use mask by cavity all the time, mask by smoothness, and then I'll just paint that way, okay? How to turn a face image of a person with a rotated face into a model? Uh, so you're talking like a three quarter and then yeah you can use the cloth brushes to create wrinkles and eye wrinkles and stuff like for sure 100% um, we could probably get into that I don't that's gonna go way off tangent right now so I want to start just let me just continue on with armor here okay so I like what's going on here right I like this kind of armor that's happening through here uh, I'm going to do I'm gonna do something different. So she's gonna be right-handed, let's say, and I'm gonna make an armor piece 
that's only on the one arm. And I'm going to give her things on that arm. Maybe I'll give her some like arrows that she can pew, pew, shoot off. Or there's some kind of even potion she holds in there and she can throw. Almost like Batman utility belt, but it's going to be an arm utility belt. And so I'm only going to put it on the one arm. Just to create some asymmetrical stuff here as well. Okay, so again, just I'm going to select this. Okay, and let's turn off the masking. And let's start making that armor. So again, I want to be able, for me, I want to make sure that there's actually movement here, right, when she's doing this. Okay, and I'm going to go like this. Let's rotate and just make my job a little bit faster here. Just changing the camera angle real fast is all I did there. Uh, so it's a little it's a little trick. I guess I'll show it to you guys really quick. So in essence, uh, when I'm rotating, and as for those that know me, I'm using the right click, right? So I just changed the camera angle. I didn't actually rotate her in space. Like I didn't switch to like the gizmo, right, and rotate her. I actually did a camera sh movement. See, see this? See how she's rotating? So right now it's like me grabbing her like this and going do 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 right. So all you got to do to do this, all right, is when you're gonna rotate, okay, in here, if you click on the document and then hold the shift key, right. So I'm clicking on the document, then shift key, and if you let go, right, of the shift key, then you get this. Okay, so again, I'm gonna click shift. And then you gotta let go. It's you guys gotta practice it. It's it's a, but I find it beneficial for me. I will use this just like I did it right there. It was just faster for me to do a dragging out, right? Of course, so you could switch to a lasso, and that would even work for me too, right? And again, I'm me keeping with the theme of I want this to stay kind of sharp. I want it to move, so obviously I need room in here in her elbow for movement. And let's just look at only this arm right now. Just so I'm not looking at anything else. So I can really see how this is going to look on her. Okay. And then for the shoulders, I'm going to show you guys a, a, a little bit of different technique. Okay. When we get into the shoulder pads, I'm going to show you guys another technique that I like to use for making things like this. And that's what we'll do right now with this armor. I'll show you a couple techniques for us. Uh, depending on what you're trying to make, one technique could be better than the other, right? So I think it's good to understand uh, what you're making and then looking at that and figuring out what feature is going to be the best for me. Again, I'm trying to stay, I'm creating armor that I want to have some sharpness, like really spiky stuff for her right now. Okay, uh, all right, I'm good with that one. So we'll just extract that. Uh, let's clean this up a little bit. We'll extract that. Perfect. And I'll accept it. Boom. Okay, so again, don't be worried. We're in the blockout stage. Like I said, guys, we're going through this whole thing together. I'm just trying to right now get her armor blocked out and get the feeling that I want to have for her, right? <clears throat> okay. So um, I like what's happening in here got like this double layering effect happening so there's one on top of another on top of another on top of another element okay so I want to show now another technique besides just doing this way of masking out stuff and doing an extract let's show another way to do this and you guys I'm gonna show you multiple ways with this stream and you guys choose which one's best for you okay oh you want to you want to see the gremlin uh, happy Friday who is it wavy gravy Yeah, if you want to send in a, for about an Ask ZBrush episode, yeah, just send it in and uh, to remind me because I'm not going to remember about the question you just asked me right now because I've got a list of Ask, Ask ZBrush. Okay, wait, Wavy Gravy, you wanted to see what, the Gremlin closer? Uh, sure. So, here you go. So, I printed this on my printer that I have. Uh, there you go. In fact, here, uh, let me... Let me, just so you can see even better, if you want, let me actually make the camera bigger in the stream for you guys. So you guys can actually see it better. We'll go real big. We'll go real big. 
but there you go so i hand painted this uh to make it look like a bronze with some weathering there is six coats or six seven let me think i have to bring it out so this is what i did i've got a printer here this is fff printing so it's not like a uh, resin it's like the plastic stuff so that's what my print looks like right so he's 24 inches you can see how big he is now that he's next to me right and i'll turn around the back and he's not glued together i actually used magnets to uh make everything work so here let me put him back on here right and let me pop off the head here okay so what i actually use is you can see magnets i use these are one inch diameter earth magnet which is some serious magnets uh, and i actually made all that inside a zbrush in essence i made the depth so you can see the magnets sitting right up around the depth of the print i did all that in zbrush i created an insert mesh brush to create the depth so that's pretty much what i'm doing and now he looks really funny without a head so let's put his head back on there you go so the printer's right next to me over here i used an artillery printer so there you go okay let me make this small again you guys don't need me taking up all that space again there you go all right so back to this and that's, that's what our goal is here right that was a project that's what we're doing here we're making a project we're making a project hey thanks lady i appreciate it thank you everybody okay so let's continue on this journey here all right so for these pieces here i'm going to go a little bit of a different route just so you guys can see um things on different ways to make stuff i'm still going to use a mask okay i'm still going to do something like this okay and i definitely now want symmetry back on so we're going to do something like that i like this how it comes to a peak like that so i'm gonna i'm gonna take that in consideration here for my girl definitely want to I'm going to create some overlap. Again, this is about overlapping pieces, and I think that's what will sell the armor a lot better. And I'm going to try and make this almost look like a little bit more like, again, re-putting in this design idea up here that I did, making it look like it's actually got wings a little bit in her since she's a banshee. Okay, got to have it. Got to have it. Yeah, that's enough okay so what i'm going to do this time is i'm going to make a new polygroup okay so i want to start using polygroups now all right and i want to now take this and make a surface from it okay so one thing that you'll do if i want to start making other pieces of armor that intersect with this like say i wanted to make something here that intersects you can see that i'm painting in this case masking from the red into the purple right so i'm kind of destroying a little bit of the design that i wanted in, in this purple part right so if you guys are going to want to do that workflow where you're making an armor piece like this right and then now you go okay i like the look of that one control w and now you want to make a piece that butts right up in next to it and control w you can see i'm overlapping into that yellow right so what you want to do is over here in your brush palette in the auto mask and menu you're in the top slider right here right there right here this is this is one of these this is one of these lisa needs braces lisa needs braces lisa needs braces lisa needs braces right so this is telling zbrush 100 percent look at polygroups and this is a global setting so this is going to be across all brushes now so what happens is now if i mask in the red you can see I can't mask in the purple or now what is now orange. I can't mask in it. And it's because I've started in the red. I use this a lot. I use this technique a lot, right? And then you can control W and you can see I didn't lose the design of the purple part. And then now the blue is butting up right next to where I want it, right? So this goes with anything. So even if I switch to another brush, right? If I switch to clay buildup, you can see I'm in the purple and you can see no matter what, I can only sculpt in the purple part. I can't touch anything else. So same thing if I start in the red. So this could be a good way of just sculpturally designing things too, because as a global setting, you start get, getting that, right? So you could use polygrouping in essence to give you what you want, okay? 
So I'm not going to go that route because I just want to show, I just want this piece and then I'm going to repeat it. And then I'm going to probably have maybe two or three. I don't know. So I'm going to use another feature to help me out with that. Okay. So my next thing for me would be, I only want to look at this purple piece. That's all that I care about right now. So what I'm going to use now, and this is the other technique, another technique, is I'm going to use panel looping now. Okay. So panel loops by default, when I click this, beep, I'm going to get that. And what it's done is ripped this from, you can see, we can kind of see through her body right now. I don't want that. I want to keep her body intact because I'm maybe change my mind a little bit with the armor after I get all the pieces and I might want to go change some things up. So it'd be beneficial to keep her body completely intact. So what I mean by that, so you can see because I array mesh this, I mean, I'm sorry, because I panel loop this, we took the purple poly group, ripped it off her, used that as the thing to create the panel, pushed it out, create the looping and created a back surface. Um, again, I'm in the design phase right now. Okay. So I'm not sure this is exactly where I want to go with this. So I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to tell ZBrush, you know what, instead of just ripping it off, it looks like I got, let me see, I think I have other parts here. Let me make sure, let me just solo this out. Okay, yep. I want just this piece right here. But what I want to do with double turned on right here, which is telling ZBrush to make the front, make the middle, make the back. I'm going to say append it this time. And because right now I, I don't need all the beveling, if I turn my loops all the way to one and panel loop, in essence, I'm getting a cleaner extract without the loop happening, right? And now what I have here is this armor, right? And if I look, it's only this, and then this is still intact, right? So that's what that append option is going to do for me. It's going to make sure that I don't rip the mesh off her body per se, right? And then now this is a piece and I can just, now I'd probably split this off. So coming to split here, I'd probably use split the parts, okay? And then say, okay. And then that's gonna create her. And then now this is, I, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, ab, we'll call this. I'm a big component people of naming things Abgar. Okay, and then there we go. So now this piece, I can refine this a little bit now. And let's start, what I'm trying to do is get something like this. And then maybe I wanted this to kind of come off her a little bit more. Let's give it a little bit more, something like that maybe. Okay, so that means this piece now needs to come off the surface a little bit because what I want to create is an overlap here. I kind of want that happening on the armor. So we're gonna come off her quite a bit here because these are gonna these gotta connect into each other. So I'm gonna use like little bits of, I'm gonna, as far as you as the user person looking at this, I'm gonna do some stuff that really sells it. And let's really pull this off. And right now I'm okay with some deforming happening. And this is another reason why these two features work really well is that we get polygrouping, right? So I got a polygroup in the front, polygroup in the back, polygroup in the middle, right? So even though I've been messing with this and kind of deforming a little bit, it's super easy for me to come over here now, come here to my deformations, and then there's a slider right here that I use, okay? Is polishing, right? So this is polished by groups. So it's looking at polygrouping and you can see this is starting to get smooth. Now, I really want some sharp points. You know, we're going into it, people. We are going, here it is, people. This is a semi-tangent. This is not an array mesh tangent. It makes sense, but I'm just gonna switch brushes. Okay, so, <clears throat> I'm gonna switch to Z Modeler. Brush Z Modeler. All right, and this edge right here, like I want a, I want a nice point happening up there, okay? Um, so, I'm gonna say, in fact, I want, the only point, but have it a little bit of flattened top of it because I don't want it to be super sharp, let's say. So I'm going to hover over this. I'm going to switch to my creasing and then say I'm going to crease here and there. Okay, so I got that on both sides. 
down here I definitely want to create a nice sharp point here too so we're gonna go there and there that looks good the rest oh yeah let's go here too I'm gonna make a point of interest right there as well with creasing I want that to stay nice and round I want that to kind of smooth through okay so I now not only have poly grouping but I have creasing okay so instead of using polish by groups over here, I'm going to use the one above it, which is polish by features. Okay. And when I use this one, what that does is it looks at poly grouping and creasing. So if we come up here and now we start looking at this where I've got a couple crease points, you can see right here, it's already starting to happen. See that? I'm already starting to get a little flat area. So watch this. I'm going to open this circle up on the polished by fusion I'm gonna make this so it's really strong so then when I start doing this you guys can see how nice and smooth this starts to get right and if I go really strong here like all the way you can see how much like that's pretty clean right now right and you can see what's happening up here right and then if I don't like that that's not what I'm in for, right? Then you come over here and say, okay, let me decrease that. I'm gonna close this and just give that a little love like that and get rid of, because I, I actually like that point better. Same thing down here. I don't I don't want that creased anymore, right? So I'm uncreasing that. And then again, polish by feature. Notice that the circle's closed, right? Now, when you guys do this one time, you can continue. So you don't have to sit here and do what I was just doing, going here, and do it again and do it again once you've done this once you can actually come down here and hit repeat to active and this you can even do to all sub tools you can repeat to other that's what that is so sometimes i'll go i'm not sure how strong i want to go and i want to do it in increments okay so let's undo as an example show me you show you guys what the heck i'm talking about right and you can guys see this approach of that's why i didn't care that the mesh wasn't super clean because I know things I'm going to be able to do down the pipeline here, right? So let's let's uncrease that. We know we don't want that crease. And I know down here, I didn't want that double creased point right here again. I want that single one, okay? Single one there. And then I want one in there, okay? So I'm using now creasing. And I'm mm, thinking here, I'm just thinking if I want to go very sharp to here. Let's see what that looks like. Why not? Let's see what that looks like, okay? Okay, so what I mean, people, is when you do this open circle, it's really strong. So the difference between the closed circle and open circle is when you're closed circle, it's only polishing, okay, the areas where polygroups are, are meeting, okay? So wherever the polygroups are touching, that's what gets polished. Nothing else is really being touched. So think about it in a silhouette. Your silhouette's not really getting destroyed. Just like if I made a fist, no matter where I move this in the camera, it's a fist, right? The open circle is saying, no, no, no. Smooth everything, but still remember the rule that creasing is involved and polygrouping is involved. So wherever there's creasing, wherever there is polygrouping, right? Make sure that's maintained. Okay? Get what I'm saying? So what you can do since this is really strong this is something you guys might want to do i'm going to say just 10. i'm going to just type in 10 and hit enter there it did the polish right but you can see it didn't polish enough so now what i can go is increments of 10 by me just hitting active active and see now i'm doing increments of 10. and i can say okay right there is enough for me i'm i'm good with that now you can see right here i didn't quite get what i wanted down here so watch this. I'm going to now say this is a global setting we just did right now, right? It's a global thing that we just did. I'm going to want to now go, mm, I just want to fix this. I don't want to globally do everything as an example. I'm going to hold my shift key for my smoothing brush, right? Come down here to my brush. You got to make sound effects, people. It's so important. So important. Right? And then... Open up smooth brush modifiers, okay? And then I'm gonna come over here and go to this waiting slider. And again, my finger's still on shift, okay? 
And then what I'm going to do is go to number nine. I'm holding the shift key and I'm gonna go number nine. I like the way number nine is. I'm gonna now go with a little bit bigger brush size and now I'm gonna hold the shift key, right? And start doing things like that. So what's happening here is it's smoothing things down right here, right? So what I'm telling ZBrush is look at polygrouping in essence, okay? So I don't have much topology going through here, right? So it's smoothing down this middle portion pretty harsh, okay? So what this is doing, let me give, give you guys a visual. Let me make a new polygroup here, right? So now if I smooth, you can see you guys can actually do something like that, right? And so instead of using the polishing feature like this, right? You can actually just by hand do something like that. Okay, but the thing you got to think, remember is there's only, there's not enough topology right here, right? So realistically, I can add some topology in here and just throw some more spans in here, right? If I gave more spans of topology like that, now when I smooth, see this doesn't shrink down anymore because there's enough information. And now as a user, as a, as a what? A user. If you're like me, sticking with the 80s, right? So now, holding the shift key, you see, I can just now touch up certain areas maybe that I want to push a little bit more. And the only thing I'm touching is that. Now, I also have creasing in here, right? So if I hold the shift key again and look at this, there's actually a smoothing brush that's creased edges. So in essence, people, there's like now, I've, I've lost track now, I think I want to say 15 smoothing brushes, okay? So seven is doing creasing. So now it's ignoring polygroup, but looking at creasing, look what that's doing for me. It's creating already a nice little, quick little beveling here on my whole thing, right? And it's looking at creasing now. So there's many ways to go about this, okay? So I'm sticking with that one. I like I like that a lot, right? And I turned off symmetry. Okay, so I'm just gonna mirror this over. And I'll do a mirror and weld. So I get the other side. Alright, so you, you guys get where I, where I went with this, right? So I'm just making a cleaner piece of armor now. Boom, just like that. We got something that's starting to look like an armor, right? Right out the gate. And again, remember, I started this just from a mask off fur, right? And we're starting to make some nice looking armor. Okay, so let's continue this process. And someone asked the question of what's the difference between um, groups borders, number six and number nine. They're both using polygrouping, but there's going to be certain scenarios where six is not going to work. It's, it's, uh, so I usually just use nine. So in essence, there's going to be scenarios depending on what your polygroups are doing. If you have multiple polygroups intersecting, there's going to be times where six will not work the way you would want it to work. So nine is just got a different algorithm to it and the way it's looking at the surface. Okay. That's really it. They're both using polygrouping, but so in essence, if you're using six and it's not doing what you want, switch to nine and see if that does what you want. Okay. There you go. All right. So, like, people, this opens up so many things for me down the pipeline, right? I can't stress enough polygrouping, 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 okay? Because what I'm going to go down the line with this for right now is now that, you know, I'm going to just give you a quick highlight of where we're going with this and why I'm doing what I'm doing here, right? I'm going to get rid of these edges. So let's do, let's do multiple edge loops. Okay, let's do, but let's change the polygrouping this time. So I'm gonna do this. Tap the Alt key, I get that polygroup. I get that polygroup, okay? So now I have a polygroup there and a polygroup there. And what I'm gonna do now is switch to just single. So I get that. Let me do something like that, something like that. And now I'm gonna look at this, right? And I'm gonna go, let's polygroup, polyloop right there and then there right so i'm going to say i want that that the blue and i want it down here as well blue and 
I don't need this to be another color, but this is my ADD kicking in, I think. I can't stand. I got to do it. <laughs> so now I've got two different colors, right? So as we go on here, we're going to start making this armor look sweet. Okay, it's going to be stuff like this that opens up avenues for me. I've got polygrouping. So here, let me turn on my display double, right? So I got these borders. I'm going to switch to say something like curve two. And then we're going to be able to do stuff like not that menu. I want this menu like this. Frame it, right? So I got a curve going around and now I just tap and I've got this tubing now. See, going around her armor. It's, it's that easy, people. It's that easy, right? And then I can tell it right here to snapshot that down and then click, right? And then those will all stay and then you get something like that, right? This is just one way, right? And you can start seeing that starts looking a lot better, but I might start using, I'm gonna sh I, my goal here for the stream is make this, but show you guys along the way that there are multiple ways to do something, okay? What's up, Vin Pachar? Thanks for tuning in. Um, how can I... You want to use Dynamesh without closing the holes? Okay. All right. So before I continue moving on with this armor, all right, I'm going to, up in here, show you that question. So in here, there's actually a geometry. And there's actually different close algorithms for here. And you can see when I scroll over, if you move that slider to zero, it does not close the holes up. There you go. And you can see there's multiple, there's in essence six different ways of closing the holes for Dynamesh. Okay, and there's a mesh closing, there's the welding. So this menu is where you can actually tell Dynamesh not to close the holes if you don't want it to. Okay, so there you go. There's to that question. All right. Okay, moving on. Okay, so again, this piece down here that we made, right? I want to now manipulate this a little bit. Okay, so I manipulate that. Let's, it's, it's, it needs to come off the surface a little bit more. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. I'm going to now deformer it. This, I, I love me, I love me some deformers, right? So you see how the deformer's on an angle right now? Okay, so what's causing that is the gizmo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the gizmo. So it's looking straight in XYZ axis right now. That's what I want. And I'm going to now switch my deformer. And now if you look, the deformer is now straight on. So the def any deformers within ZBrush have the ability to have their own symmetry. So it's not using the world space symmetry anymore at all. Okay. And what I'm going to do is using these orange cones, I'm going to limit this way. Using this one along the Y, I'm going to limit it this way. And right now, I don't even want any along the X. And I'm going to pull on the red cone to turn on mirrored symmetry. So I'm going to turn it all the way on. So the only dots now available to me are these dots over here. You know, maybe we'll make one centering point of interest because I want this to stay pointed. So now I'm just going to do this. I'm going to un I'm gonna mask out the middle points. And then now I can kind of a little bit more to fit around her body a little bit what I would want. And then there we go. That's 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 more what I'm looking for. And then I can continue to move this, right, and get something like that. That's that's what I'm looking for. You know what? I think also looking at this. Let's see. I think let's let's have some fun here. Let's do a little more changing in the design a little bit. Let's go way out there like that for this one. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna come over here and accept that. And then I'm going to make another deformer this time again. And this time I want to add a few more points of interest to it. Uh, I'd say that's enough. Okay. And still symmetrical. And now I'm going to unmask these and just give these. And as I'm walking through a little bit more of a bend like that. Yeah. Let's go a little bit more because I want it to start wrapping around her a little bit better. And then keep this idea, right, of armor stacking on itself, right, and have have some kind of designing element here, right, for sure, okay, because I'm going to probably make some kind of, like, skirt on her, too, for the bottom half, right, we're, we're going all over the place, baby, it's going to be good stuff, okay, so, 
Now that I have this, I want more than one of these. I want a couple of these, okay? So I'm going to say, all right, this for me, my go-to over here is a Ramesh. This is my go-to for something like this. It's really going to help. It's hard to read. Hi, I think it says Alex. It's hard to read the red text. Hi, Alex. One Alex. I think it says F1. If I, if I read it, let me get a drink of water. Okay. So, now I'm going to say a ray mesh. Okay. I'm going to say, let's lock the start, lock the position. I'm going to turn on transpose. And that way I can use the transpose line as my GUI. Okay. So, in essence, you can see it says repeat two, stage one, and then I'm in move mode. This is relationship. When you turn this button on, right, you see things turn on and off. When this is on in a ray mesh, I'm telling ZBrush, I actually want to use the transpose line as the GUI to drive most of the stuff that's over here. So what I mean by that is right here, I'm in offset, right? And I can go offset in the Y and you can see I'm just taking that same piece and it's just making the second one, right? And then here I can say repeat, how many do I want? I don't know, maybe four, I think five might be too many. I don't know, this is the beauty of a ray mesh that I love. This is what I love about a ray mesh. Okay, so what I want to do now is start looking at this a little bit more, right? And this is where someone just brought up, Alex brought up, that would pierce her belly. It probably would a little bit, right? So, but this is the beauty of a ray mesh, okay? Is now, instead of doing all this, I can actually be in move mode and then just use this and position these. So I'm going to position these a little bit, okay? I'm going to go a little something more like that. Then I'm going to switch back to the gizmo. Like, right? So I want to switch back to my gizmo. And then now watch. I'm going to rotate this one piece, and then they're all rotating. Right? So now, that that's too many. That's too many. I don't want four. What does three look like? What is maybe two? Let's let's start with three. Right? This is what I, this is what I'm a, why I'm a big fan of a ray mesh. Okay? And let's go, let's, I'm going to make this even wider. I'm going to go a little bit more and then let's bring that out again off, off her chest a little bit more and maybe I'll rotate it a little bit less like that. Okay. And then now I need to again, fix this so I can use this deformer. This time I'm going to use bend arc cause I'm just, I'm just trying to throw stuff at you guys right now along the X. Give me those points. So I got three points here. Okay, so I want smoothness. I want them to be symmetrical. So now when I grab this point, I can do something like more like that for the armor. Okay, and then maybe something like this, right? As an example. All right, and then now my array mesh, I don't want them repeating like this. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here to my scale and I'm gonna start going a little bit we'll keep probably I think we'll keep Y the same and let's try making the Z now nah, we'll keep we'll keep the Z one I think what we'll do is we'll make the X so they kind of start tapering a little bit not a ton just enough so I tapered along there okay and just like somebody was bringing up right um, it could pierce her, but it's pretty far off her chest now, right? So I'm going to fix this by saying, okay, that's, that's relatively what I want right there, right? It's close, right? So this gives me just, this is a way to design and see, is that going to work? So I'm going to right now just leave this in a ray mesh because I'm not sure yet if this is what I really want because I need to start getting the other pieces of topology in here, right? I still don't know if this is really what I want, okay? So now I'm just using move, ma move brush now to just do some changes in the armor a little bit and then see how that's gonna look on her, right? And again, this armor also still needs to come off her, right, a little bit. Like this, this definitely needs to be expanded a lot bigger 
like something like that. So it's not sitting directly on her body. It needs it needs some love. There. There. And definitely needs to come up a lot more. Come out more. Not that much. And then now I want that refined. There. And I'm going to round this off a little bit as we go on for sure. I definitely see that. Okay. And then again, if you don't want it to pierce her, right, you can put less of that in there, right? And then see, I've messed up some stuff. So this all goes back to the things I've already shown you guys. You guys can come over here and start polishing this off, right, with groups and stuff. So I can say, yeah, let's make it a little bit stronger and maybe go that route, right? And if I want to make sure these stay very sharp over here, right? You now know, you can switch to, here, let's just look at this. Switch to Z-Modeler. And now just go, ba -da -da, crease. And I'll put a crease there. And right now, I want to keep this relatively sharp. Okay, and then now, polish by features. We'll go a little bit stronger. So that's stats. Okay? There we go. We're off and running now. Okay, so let's now make some shoulder pieces for her. For sure. All right, so I like I like this. This is pretty cool, but I really like this too. This is pretty awesome over here. So let's try a different technique this time. Okay, let's do something different. Okay, so, and again, I'm going to be re refining that. So this is the thing. Don't get too attached. Don't get too attached. So another way to go about this is, okay, we're back to selecting her. Okay. So again, I, I look at these armor pieces. I kind of like what's going on with this one. I really like this. And then there's another underlining one in there, right? So this is a nice kind of flow in here. So I can see right around here on the body, it's going to need a point of pivot of interest, right? So right around in here, I would say I need a point of interest. And then it comes around, we're going to say around her scapula and her clavicle bones because... I don't want those to collide, right? And then it probably, I say this one comes down a little bit like this. I'm gonna go with a smaller brush size. Comes down more like that, all right? And uh, for now, I'm gonna go right about there, come up like this and make this be my, my piece. Okay, so this is me again, just quickly masking something off and getting a visual guide for me to see I can look at all the angles and see what's working and what's not working for me and this isn't bad actually I don't I don't mind it too much of what I'm seeing right now I'm gonna refine this line a little bit better on that angle and then let me refine that a little bit more let's not go back as far also okay so I like what's starting to happen here for me Okay, so if I want to start off, okay, I've shown you guys techniques now, just extracting. I've shown you a technique of using uh, panel loops. Now, the difference, those two things, what they're doing is just ripping off what you masked off and creating the pieces, right? So the problem here is that's a little bit more dense, okay? So this right here, right, you can see it's, this is already 70,000 polygons, right? So it's, it's not crazy dense, but it's not super low. So what if you guys want to do, you want to build something where you want to build low polygons, okay? So what I'm going to do is use this as my guide, and I'm going to switch to my handy trusty, which I'm a big fan of this brush, for this purpose alone, okay, is my topology brush. So I'm going to say, okay, I need a line there. Okay, and then it comes across like this. Good. And then comes across like that. I need a line of topology there. Then I need one that comes here. So this is just pretty much tracing, right? And I want that. And then I want one that comes from here all the way up like that, let's say. Okay, so now what I have here, I'm going to redraw that one because I'll get a better right is this I've only got now very low low polygon right 
And then this is what we have here. There already is a mask fill ability. When you say mask fill, uh, what are you looking for? Because you can, you already can. You can, you can create polygrips for masking. You can use paint to create masks. Uh, now, there's also a way you guys can use creasing in the Z Mother now to create polygroups. There's so many ways to create masking abilities. So, um, Saticus, if you want to expand a little bit more, um, specifically what you're looking for, because already my head's going, boop, 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 boop. there's so many things in my head. What's going on 3D Arp with Javad? Since there isn't a Ramesh, does it push the change like Sculpt 1? Wait, since that wasn't a Ramesh, does it push the changes like Sculpt on gets on all three? Yes. Okay, so to your question, going back here, if I sculpt on this one, right, whatever I do to this one, see it happens to all of them. Because instances, right? So this is a, see another way, see the work. You can really, this is where I'm going to go with the armor, stuff like this, right? Guys, we're at the very beginning stages right now, right? I haven't started putting in the, what we, I would say, the cool stuff, the cool factor yet. We're not even close to that. Okay? This is the kind of stuff we're starting to do, but to answer your question, there you go. Okay, so back to this. Okay, so now I've got these points of interest, right? So I'm just going to connect. Boom, I got now polygons there. So I got two on each side. So wherever there's four green circles, that creates a polygon. And the only thing you can create with this is either quads or triangles. That's it. Nothing else. Quads or triangles. Okay? Yes, and I will be streaming back to my regular streams on the Pixelogic site um, every Friday. I've personally been streaming also on my own personal little fun project that I've been working on every Tuesday night and Wednesday nights. But, yeah, we'll be streaming here 11 a.m. every Friday this month. There'll be one Friday I won't be streaming because I got other things going on. All right, so now you can see this is not sitting quite right on her body. So what I need to do is just add another piece of topology there. Probably add another one there. And now I need this profile, right? So I've got pretty much what I want there. So this is what I have right now. So I've got one, two, three, four faces. And now I'm going to make this eight. So I'm going to come across and say, let me just go halfway pointer here. I don't need that. Uh, oops. Let's redo that one. That's close. I'm going to do it again. There, that's better. Okay. And then I'm going to say, mm, you know, that's probably going to be enough for me. For what I'm trying to make with this for. So now I tap and boom, I get the topology. Okay. And then now the width of the topology, okay is based upon the draw size now okay so if i go a little bit bigger and i tap you see it's they're a lot bigger now like the thickness is a lot more right so there you go and then now this is masked off so this definitely if i'm going to go a little bit more this route there's some change here that needs to happen now so i'm just going to push these off and let's see, it definitely, I want them to rotate up a little bit more. I want, I'm not going to go exactly like this, but I'm going to go relatively close. Okay, I like that. So what I'm going to do now is break these off. Okay, so her whole body's masked, but those shoulder pieces that I just made, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to come down here and say, this time you can use unmasked, masked, or even split to similar. Any one of these three would work. So I'm going to, this I'm going to just split the similar. And what it does is it found that this shoulder on her left shoulder, our screen right, and then her right shoulder, they're the same piece of topologies in essence. So when I hit split the similar, it's finding that and making those two pieces one new sub-tool. Right? So you can see down here, that's what I have. And I'm going to say, let's rename these. Shoulder. Okay, and now that we started getting some pieces here, uh, I'm a big, big, big fan of 
making folders now because this is going to help me down the process. So I'm going to quickly make a folder here for all the pieces that I want to be in, which are all of these. That's good. I don't want her teeth and her eyes. I'm going to say always yes by hitting control F and I'm going to say armor. And then now there you go. So the teeth, right, are not in the folder and not in the eyes. So now all the armors and I just add, took six sub tools and turned them into one. Okay. I just read the question. Someone asked earlier about the way of making big Paul drone, Starcraft, Terra style. So this is one way to make the base. Okay, you're just asking, asking somebody. Okay, so what I've done is I've made all my sub tools that are important to me. The armor parts that I'm making right now are all going to now live in a folder. Because out the gate, that's kind of what I I prefer to have is them living in a folder right now. Okay, so. To recap this, I'm going to use something that you guys all have. Let's use the demo soldier. This is how easy it is. This is how I like to make folders when I especially were in my project. Okay? Is building. And I'm telling you, as we move on here, people, you're going to see why I want a folder system. Again, every stream I'm doing here in the Pixel Logic, right, for us here, that's on this project now. From here on out until I'm done, I get it sculpted. We're going to prep it for 3D print. We're going to print it out, and then we're going to hand it off to Scott at um, Miniac, right? So he can hand paint the model. So you guys really see this workflow happening. Okay, so what you guys can do is turn on your gizmo, okay? And right now, you guys are all partying with me. We're having a big party, right? So Joseph coined the phrase of this icon looking like pizza boxes, which I totally, totally get where he was going with that pizza box thing. Right, and then uh, and then we went a little bit further, and I was like, "Well, really, what it is? You're, bu you're it's a bunch of people coming to a party. It's not just me, and my wife and my daughter. So I might need only one pizza pie. It's all of you for the people watching right now. We're gonna need multiple pieces of pies, right? We're just multiple pizzas, right? So what that really is is sub tools. So this icon, when you click it, it's saying, "Hey, I want to move, scale, rotate." multiple sub tools together as a unit okay so this is even though this is all all separate sub tools you can see now i can move the whole demo soldier right so even though they're all there this allows me to move them all so what i did is i started making a folder so in this case let's say i want to make a folder of all his clothing to be in one folder Okay, so with this turned on, it's saying multiple subtools, i.e. multiple pizzas to the party, multiple subtools to the party. You guys, selection ability is control and shift. So you can click on this and just start tapping on the items that you want to go into a folder, which I want this and I want that. And I'll put the gloves and I'll put the knee pads in a folder. Okay, so you can see what happens is everything else gets rendered not its full cap capabilities. You get a pizza. You get a pizza. I like it. Right? And you can see I can move it. I can rotate it. And I can scale these all as a unit. I, I Guys, I use this feature all the time. But because this is activated, if you guys click on Control F or you click the new folder button, right? That's going to say new folder. And then I can just now call this folder. It's asking you to name the folder. Close. Bam. There you go. All five subtools are now in this folder, right? And the rest are not. Now, this is great because, guys, I can call this action now so easy with the folder now. All I have to do is come over to the little gear over here, right? Look up here. Look up here. Look up here. Ca -ca. Right? Ca -ca. Click on this gear, and the first action is going to be transpose set. Click on that. Boom. I just got back the same thing I had when I created the folders. This is a one, this is just reasons why I start using folders within my pipeline and within my workflow. Okay, there you go. So then in essence, now that I'm starting to make more pieces for her, I wanna start using some folders, okay? So let's get back to this piece here now, right? So I'm gonna turn on dynamic subdivs so that I can see this. I want 
the piece here. I want the armor piece. Like, I want this piece, in essence. I'm going to turn on the dynamic so we get something like that. Let's just solo this out, all right? So this is way too thick. Way too thick. Way, 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 way too thick. All right, so this thickness isn't working for me. Now, I can switch to Z Modeler, okay? And because this also creates a polygroup on the top, polygroup in the middle, polygroup in the back. Okay, there's a party in the front, party in the middle, party in the back, since we're going with the party theme. I can over, hover over face, go to QMesh, polygroup all, and instead of Q-meshing it like this, if I hold the shift key, boom, I can adjust that thickness just like that. It's that easy, right? And now you can see that's sitting a little bit better, like where I want it to sit in essence, okay? So I'm going to take this even maybe another step, okay? So right now, I don't like what's happening over here. So clearly, I want creasing in here, right? So I would put a... I'd want to crease there. I want to crease there. I want to crease there. And in the back here, I want to crease. I want to crease. And so when I smooth, look at it smooth, I start getting that look. Right? Because that's more what I'm looking for from her to have. It's something more like that. Right? Okay? So, I'm going to do one other thing on top of this. Let's, let's go for it. Okay? I'm going to say, let's just look at this purple one. And now, looking at just this purple polygroup, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to delete the hidden. So the only thing now we have is this. Now I'm using dynamic subdiv with two subdivision levels. Okay, so I'm going to maybe go up one more, maybe, in that realm of the world. Okay? Now, uh, yeah, let's go... Now let's keep it low because I want to show you guys what we can do now. So what I can do is instead of now having the thick part, now because we're using dynamic subdivs here, right? So I can look at what does this look like if it's divided four times? How is that really going to look? You can see how smooth that's going to work. And what I'm going to do now is throw some thickness on here. And now I just stop at the thickness I want for this. And then there you go. And then, do I want post-subdiv or not post-subdiv? I'm going to go post-subdiv. And then now that we have this, it's an easy thing to start adjusting here. Okay? So, in fact, I'm going to switch to the move infinite. And then just start adjusting and playing with this. Maybe, you know, I want something more, I don't know, more like that. Right? And start positioning this a little bit different. And I'm really low polygon. So it's really easy to manipulate and move this. Right? So this is kind of what I'm trying to have you guys see. That there's more than one way to create something for sure. Right? There's always more than one way to do this. Right? So I want this definitely to have some sharpness to it. So we're gonna do something like that. Let's let's turn on the gizmo here. And let's frame it up. And let's just start playing with this a little bit more. I'm gonna put a little bit more of something like that. Let's go let's let's go like this. And there. Okay, and then there we have that. Okay, and then looking at this, there's there's more than one. Okay. And creasing is on, so creasing can be previewed. However, once you add thickness, this geometry doesn't actually exist, right? So you can't put the creasing edges here. You'd have to apply in order to do that. Okay, so once we're done here, I'll show you what I mean. All right. So just looking at this, let's start repositioning this a little bit more. And because it's just one very low flat plane in essence of topology, it's so easy to just quickly do stuff. Even like rotate portions of it, really get 
kind of something different. And because it's so low, 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 low polygon, it's really easy for me to make some adjustments to this and maybe just give it a little bit different look here. So let's say something like that. So there's just some movement in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this one, let's put a little bit more movement in there. Yeah, something more like that. Maybe something more like that. Mm, yeah, that looks, see how's that looking from this angle? Okay, I like that. Okay, this one, let's adjust this a little bit more. So uh, again, like I said in the beginning of the stream, right? I'm trying to show you guys more than one way to do something. So, oh yeah, this, and then let's, looks like this out here. Let's take, now let's take this right here and let's move, let's just move this around a little bit. It's creating a little bit of this. See, a single, single, single plane, very low topology. And now if I want to put a little dip in it, I can put a little dip in it. What's that start looking like, right? So now it's starting to have a little dip, okay? If I want to get some more edge loops in here, because it would make sense to put more edge loops so that dip would uh, be a little bit better in there. I can come in here, brush the modeler. I'm gonna slide this complete edge loop down a little bit more, and then I'm gonna insert this, okay? And not inset, insert. And then now see, I can add an edge loop here. So one thing you guys also need to be aware of, you can use your Z intensity, okay? And see, so you can add, and it's actually pushing out on the surface. So you can do stuff like that too. So I'm just going to add another edge loop right here. Okay, start seeing what that starts to look like. Yes, yes, yes. So now let's just start moving some points around. Okay, and whoops, I want the move brush. Just start getting a little bit more of the shape that I want for that shoulder piece. And then of course, what's new now, people, by the way, right, while I'm doing this, okay, if I switch to actually Z Modeler instead, you have a move ability here, right? So I can move them around. But what's great is I can actually tell it to snap to the surface. So I can make, make these points actually connect See, that just connected to her, right? So that's where I was, this is where it is. That's where I was, this is where it is, okay? I, I don't want that, I, I don't want it to completely connect to her. So that's why I'm using the move brush to kind of just quickly put, give it a little bit more armor in there. And then just, again, looking at my low, low polygon version to just get an idea of where I'm going with this. Because once we get something that I like, right? It's not, it's easy to turn this into now topology, obviously, with some thickness. So let's say something like that. So right, so I'm gonna have to think of a way to attach, right? Because obviously, in this case, you can see the armor comes all the way up. I'm, I'm going more the sexy route of this, right? So I'm gonna have to think of ways to attach this to her. This is why I'm saying I'm probably gonna create maybe some straps or something like that in here. Okay, so I'm gonna say that looks good. All right, so I'm gonna say that with some thickness. I'm gonna say no smoothing at this time. And then now I'm gonna apply. So now I have the topology to go back and say, remember, I want to have now, I want that creased, I want that creased, I want that point way out there creased, I want that creased, I want that creased, and then now, right, looking at this, we don't want any thickness, and now some smoothness, this is what I'm starting to make now, right? You can see where I'm starting to go with this. And then now, continue my process of just quickly making any adjustments that I'd like to make depending on the you know your silhouette this is still very low 
right? Polygon wise. Still very, very, very low. Right? And again, I'm just right now working on just trying to block things out for her. And it's not like I can't change anything down the pipe. That's going to be easy to do. Okay, something like pretty extreme. <laughs> I might want to bring this in a lot more. And then you guys can also continue to use the modeler. I can slide and completely change just doing this. So you can change the look. So if I want to like create a sharp point right there now, so there's a defining point right here now. Because I moved, see how close I moved those together, right? And I was not working in symmetry, so let me mirror weld. Okay, so see, I can move this, but if you turn dynamic on, you can see whoops, what that movement is going to do to her. And then maybe now I want to insert another edge loop. So I'm going to turn this off so I can see maybe even doing something like that. All right, so I got now a defining point there. Um, for me, it's it's too sh perfect. You shouldn't make stuff this perfect, right? So I'm going to tell ZBrush, right now I'm creasing edges. I'm going to tell it to only hold those creases for a couple there. And that's, that's but it's still sharp, but now it's softening just enough to give me that, right? And then, of course, I want another one, right? So I want to make maybe two of these. Right, so let's see what that's going to look like. And this time I'm just going to use the gizmo. Hold control and copy. Maybe rotate that a little bit there. And then this one, looking at this, it needs to sit off for that much. And then now this one needs to, let's recenter. Right, this one needs to actually stretch out more. It needs to sit further out off her body because it's going to be attached to that. So there. Right, and then there's my shoulder armor for her. Okay, and of course, if I want to start continuing this process, maybe, you know, I'm thinking about this, maybe I'll make a, a full-on shoulder thing here. Again, I don't know. That's the beauty of this, okay? That's what I'm trying to show you guys is creative, design, figure it out, right? What's your question about polygrouping here? How to tell a flat brush to use polygrouping for stick one edge to the other or merge two edges in center wait so you're asking a lot in that question wait how to tell a flat brush to use how to tell i'm assuming what brush to use polygroup for st sticking one edge to another uh, well i'm you're i think you're trying to go down the road of z modeler okay because z modeler has the ability to to say, hey, I want to take like an edge and connect them, or I want to take this point and connect it to that point. So you got like things like stitching. You see an end point, so I can say click that one and then click that one and see it's connected now. I'm assuming that's what you're looking for, something like that. And then of course there's things like in edge loops, there's collapse, right? So you can collapse the poly loop. It's going to go that direction, okay? If I go that direction, it goes this direction, right? So you can do something like that, which actually I like that better, actually. <laughs> there, there. Let's see, uh, just for giggles, let's see what three look like. All right, let's see what three would look like. I don't know if it's going to work, but I want to see if three is too many and maybe... I think I might like three. This is where a ray mesh comes in handy, right? And I got to remember, people, our ultimate goal here is I got to 3D print this, right? And he's got to be able to paint it. So I got to think about all this stuff too when I'm making these pieces, right? Right now, there's some large gaps happening through here, right? So I got to think about that and make sure I'm getting a lot of overlap inside. I think I'm going to stick with two, two right now. Maybe play with this a little bit more where I want it to sit. Okay, 
here. We're going to go that route. Okay. So let's go clean this up because I want to show you now a nice technique for this one. Okay. So remember, we this was the very first piece I started with way in the beginning of our process here. Okay. So I want to clean this. This is this is not looking good. It's not looking good like some of these other pieces, right? So I'm going to clean this up a little bit just to see what could this look like. All right. So let's just look at only this. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to say only give me the purple. So I'm selecting a poly group, right? I'm going to take a drink of water. How are we doing on time? 1030. All right. We still got some time. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So this ain't the cleanest piece, right? We know we can get a little more clean now, though, right? There are ways we can go about this with the polygrouping to get this to be pretty clean. So what I want to do is even show, besides that, let's let's look at another way to even do this. Again, because I'm telling you guys, there's depending on what you're making, there might be a better way to do something, right, than what we had before, right? So what I'm going to do is get rid of the thickness. I don't need the thickness right now. Right, so I might, well, let's see, you know what? I'm thinking I'm gonna polish this just a bit. Let's just, so my visual, not too much. Yeah, that's enough, okay? We're gonna look at just the purple part, okay? And I'm gonna delete now the rest. Bing! So that's gone. Uh, let me select out only this and delete those little pieces now. So now all I have is this, which is, it's going to be your neck guard kind of a thing. You know, kind of a little bit of what's doing here, but I want it to come up like this all the way up into the neck. Right? And I'm going to expand upon this. Okay? So now what I'm going to do instead is let's start looking at this in pieces. So I'm going to look at the front and say, okay, I want this to be a lot sharper. So I'm going to use now slice circle and say, let's go and we need a slice. Let's slice it. Let's say there. So I can hide that, right? Delete hidden and mirror and weld becomes my friend now. Okay, there we go. Let's make now another one like this. Okay, I don't like this angle. So again, this is where this is coming into play. Maybe I go a little bit more like that. Okay, that's not working for me. So I'm gonna switch now to slice curve. So I can slice across this and say, I want it to go to a point from here. Uh, no, I don't like that. And just go around and that, and then now hide that, whoops. Show only that, right? Delete the hidden, mirror and weld, right? So what I'm creating here is I'm trying to create um, pieces that are clean for me. And because I'm in the modeler, I want that to be its own poly group there. I want that to be part of that. So I get a little bit better clipping. Yeah, that's better. Doesn't need to be perfect. So they hit a mirror and well, okay, so that's now the front. I like that. It's got nice flow through here. Okay, so well, actually, I needed to bring everything back when I was doing my mirror weld. I was deleting the back half, too. <laughs> okay, so let's go back. I'm going to go from here. This is just me. Yep. Okay, that's good. Let's delete that. Delete hidden. Okay. Whoops and mirror and weld. I just like drawing, I think it's probably because I'm right-handed, I like drawing on this side. I don't know why. Because slicing is not symmetric. So let's do something like, like that. Yep, and then delete hidden, mirror, and I can make a macro for this since I'm using this. I think I'm gonna, hmm, hmm. What did this look like? Well, not this. What? I think I'm going to add a point right here as well. 
Let's see what that looks like. Let's only look at this portion. I don't want to go anywhere else. Yeah, I think I'm. Yeah, I think I like that better. Let's see how it's starting to look on her. Right. So this is what I have, and then there's another one I made. So let's turn that one off. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're getting something clean here. It's what I like. It's what I like to see. Okay, let's get rid of that little bit again. Delete it, delete it, delete it, delete it. Oh yeah, these are old school fun features. Okay, so now let's go to the back. Okay, in fact, here, let's also, the top part is just not working for me. So let's just slice right across. So we get something like that. Let's see how that looks on her. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay. I'm going to now delete hidden. And then now here, this portion. So I'm going to look at just the front again. So that when I'm going to um, do this, I want it to um, be able to cut through here. Right? So maybe we'll go this route. We'll go a little bit more down the body. Okay. Now, if this isn't quite working for you can't slice, you guys can also. It is possible that you guys can actually, here, let me show you. You guys can also slice with masking. Right? So you see that mask? Boom, I just sliced. Yeah, see it's sliced. I got a slice now. So you have that ability as well to be able to do that. So what that is, is I've masked off and then I used a shortcut, right? To get to that part. And then now see that's nice and clean. And what I'm using is in here in the edge loop, this button right here, edge loop masked border. Right? So there you go. Yeah, Evan, I'll try and see if I can get to that with this because I'm gonna, I'm getting her to a point, Evan, where your question about making a collar. All right, so I'm gonna say, let's, let's continue this. Let's go now, I'm gonna go to the back and I want it to slice like through here. And I'm making sure that I am slicing over the topology here that I want. So modify, delete hidden, mirror and weld. Do I want this to maybe come across? So again, I just want this. So I don't want that slicing. So I'm using the ability. Do I want something more like that to repeat what's in the front? Kind of put some of that in the back as well. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to also go through here. Let's see how this looks. How's that going to look? Delete hidden, mirror and weld. Okay, and then I need to clean now this one up. Whistle while you work. See it's getting, see it's getting that down there. So guys, this is why I'm, I'm doing this doing this slice and if I tap control I can actually use the selection brush because really the only important the important part to me that right now is this I just I'm playing with that line right now this is all that's important to me so I want to make sure nothing else is being touched when I do this right so that way I can get something like that on there okay and then delete hidden mirror and weld and then there you go so now I'm starting to get more and more and more what I want. Uh, looks like I need, here, let's also, let's take this, let's delete symmetry. So I'm only looking at this. Let's hide this. And now let me fix this part up. I think I want it to come like that. And then show only that. 
and then delete hidden mirror and weld. There. So almost like it's armor, but it's like a, a necklace. And I'm going to create a crown for her. So I'm kind of creating like a mirrored thing that's going to happen here in her armor and her crown. Okay. So now that I have this, the next thing I want to do is actually remesh it. Because this is all triangulated. It's sitting at almost 10,000 polygons. So I'm just going to use the Z remesher to remesh this for me. Okay. That would be my goal. I, uh, Sina, I'm not quite understanding your question completely. Can you remesh the neck without changing edge features? What do you mean changing edge features? What are you talking about with changing edge features? Looks like a character from Heavy Metal. We'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, this stream 100% saved on our Twitch and our YouTube. Okay, so now that I have this, I need symmetry still. And now I'm going to go to the Z remesher. And we can start with 5,000 and just click and see what we get. Right? I'm just trying to reduce it and see what kind of things that I can get out of this. Right? So, looks like I want to go a little bit more. Let me also make sure. So, I'm going to check my mesh integrity. Okay, we're good. Fix. Let's, let's just start playing with this now. Right, I'm losing some of this. It's having problems with the way these are all overlapping through here. Oh, let me see what else. All right, so let's see. Let me try a little test here. Let me take a look at this. I'm going to crease it. Let's throw some thickness on this and see what we add. Uh huh. There's some bad topology there. Uh, there's some not so friendly topology right in there and some of the corners here just looking at what I have here okay so this is now that if this is giving me some kind of topology I want a quick way to really get this maybe to be a little bit better right so i could actually just use the extract again if i wanted to right so i'm just going to use the extract to just give me a new piece right that's that's ridiculous that's too much okay so i'm going to go way less point zero five extract Okay, extract. Okay. Whoa. That's pretty cool. It's a little too much. Too much. Too much. Too much, baby. Okay, that's better. It's getting more in the range right now that I want. There we go. Okay, I'm going to accept that. What I have now is this version, right? And you can see the results we're getting. Are nice and clean now this is something we could try and remeshing a little bit more okay so now that there's some thickness and there's some pieces here okay I'm gonna add a little bit more topology through here because knowing I know the Z remesher needs a little bit of information and what I'm also going to do is not change the polygrouping I want something like that okay and then now come back to my Z remesher and because I have something with some thickness okay I'm gonna say keep groups and then symmetrical and then remesh and let's see what we get now because now there's some volume in here so this is what we are getting looks like I've got two pieces in here let me make sure that there's the front and back It's not smooth. Let's see if that gives me a better result. Okay, still.
still not liking what I'm getting through here. Okay, so let's try dropping it down and remeshing it now. Let's see if that'll help me clean it up. Nope, 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 don't like it, don't like it. See, it's just a normal. There. That's better. That's what I'm looking for. Something more like that. So now I got this version, right? Of that armor. Okay? And then going looking at this, it's easy for me to say, all right, I want to start maybe expanding upon that a little bit more. Whoops. And now continue building armor pieces, right? So that's just another way to go about this. Okay, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna, probably gonna change this up a little bit because I don't know if this flow is working for me. I kind of like what's starting to happen here. There's a point here. So I would think I need from above this to kind of flow a little bit better to continue that idea through the rest of the piece, right? So this is going through here and then wouldn't even hurt to make this be a little bit raised a little bit more okay mm, i don't know if i like that i'm gonna go i'm gonna stick with that look okay All right and again i'm just creating the pieces right now so i can start getting the overall view and of course because i'm talking to you guys i'm walking through things so this would be a lot faster process The free the freeze border is 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 a feature. Right, so um, it was having the issue because the the topology in the middle and it's trying I was trying to do polygrouping and then it was trying the topology does matter when you're sending them to zero measure, so I didn't have really the greatest topology. So that's why that was happening. Uh, so, said so I still don't understand what you're trying to ask me. That's just a feature. If you're turning on freeze border, it works. It works. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. But I don't ever use that. Um, freeze border is going to be here. Here's the easiest way that I can explain it to you. It's about this, right? So if we take this guy. You see, there's a border here. In essence, there's an opening. There's a hole in the model, right? So when you're doing this, okay, this is a border. And if you want to keep that border, in essence, what you're telling ZBrush with freeze border here is all the vertex points along this border here are not allowed to move. And they must exist in the remesh. That's what that's doing, okay? So when... You're doing this, right? And you have this on. If I remesh this, you're going to see along the border, there's going to be a bunch of triangles probably fanning out possibly. Or just quads that are kind of fanned out because it's got to drop and make sure there's a vertex point at every one of those borders. So the topology at that border is not going to be ridiculously clean. It's going to be quadded, but it's not going to be ridiculously clean because you're telling it one of the important things of the remesh is making sure those vertexes along the border still exist in the new remeshed version. Okay? So we'll let this finish off so you can see, and then I'm going to answer the other question that someone brought in for us as well. Let me let this finish. And obviously it's remeshing, and it's looking at all the borders of this. So this is going to take a little bit long, longer time because it's got to find the borders. And then there you go. So see, you get topology like that on the border, right? So looking at that, see? Because all those vertex points, see, existed. So see all the ones along the border? They're being, they're being maintained. That's all that's doing. Okay? 
that's what that's doing. Now, someone asked about also early about creating like a collar and things like that. I think the best way to do that now, honestly, is low polygon Z modeler way to do that would be the way I would go. Okay, with that. So if I had, um, let's, okay, so let's take her real quick. Let's just not, let's look at her right now and we'll turn everything else off for now. All right, and let's say you wanna start making a shirt or a collar. You can use zero mesh to then get, if you're gonna start dense and use zero mesh to get low, or you can just start low with some of the techniques I've already been sharing with you, right? So I can just switch the topology brush right out the gate, right? And say, okay, I have a shirt that's gonna come up on her. So I would say, okay, it comes up like that. And then I need it to go all the way around her neck. Right, and then I need a point down the center. Okay, good. Now from the center out, needs to come like this. Same thing down here, so we can start making topology. Okay, and then I'd say, all right, we'll add one strip through here. Something like that, okay? So I have that, click, I get it. There's my, there's the piece, right? That's starting it off. I'm gonna s separate this, okay? So I'm just gonna use one of the other options. Now that I have this, okay? Looking at it smooth, it's gonna look like this, okay? I'm gonna switch to Z Modeler. Let's go ahead and uncrease that back part. I don't want that crease back there. All right, and I'm gonna only look at the green part now. That's all I care about. And in fact, I'm gonna delete the rest. Okay, and in fact, you don't have to have thickness of the topology brush. If you move your draw size to one, when you're using the poly brush, it's just gonna create a plane like this. There'll be no thickness, okay? And we're gonna use dynamic subdiv, like we've been using. So I'm gonna smooth it four times, and then I'm gonna start adding some thickness to this. And I want the offset to be out. So this is what we have now, right? Right here. So there's an edge flow here, okay? There's an edge flow happening right here, right? We're not looking at a thick piece. We're only looking at um, a thin plane. So what you can now do is you can extrude, right? So I can now extrude out this edge, right? And manipulate this. So what I can do is tell it to extrude the whole thing, right? Something like that. So what I'm actually doing is extruding that out like that okay and then now i can extrude this down and then right now my normals are flipped right so if we look at this place see these normals are the wrong direction you want see how you can't see them when you're looking at this they're the wrong direction so i'm just going to quickly i'm going to polygroup this off real quick just so i can show you what the heck i'm talking about and I'll hide the purple, and then I'll look at the green, come down here, and flip my normals. Right, and I don't want this one. Right, and then so now we start creating this. And right now, I don't want any creasing happening. So I'm going to uncrease all, and start looking at it in that sense. So this is how you could go about creating a collar. Right? Something like this. So what I would probably do doing this, you have seen that we're on a single plane, just extrude, first extrude up, give some, give some topology to work with this way. Because when you divide, you want that to start smoothing out. So I'm going to increase all so we get that look, right? And then now I want, in essence, you want now this edge, right? Instead of doing that, you want it going out. But what's gonna happen is that, it's gonna create flip normals. So I'm gonna use polygrouping to just flip these. 
and now I got that. And then now just create the other part of the collar, something like that. I don't know, something like that. And it's low, 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 low polygon, right? So there's nothing stopping me from continue working like this if you want to, right? And then there you start having the collar. And it looks like I need to weld my points. These faces here now need to be flipped. Those ones right there. Okay. So there you go. That could be one way you could go about it, right? So it's a good way to start working in that sense. Okay, so that's one way you can go about making a color. If you wanted to, you could just, instead of that, just have this, right? And then now that you have this, okay, I'm going to convert this now. This would be another way to go about it, to have no smoothness. There's your collar, right? Apply it, and now let's say I just need now, I need an edge loop right here, let's say, okay? And then now I Q mesh off here. So the only faces I want to move are these ones. And this is where polygrouping is going to come into play for me. And I didn't turn symmetry on, so, right? And then now this just comes out like that, let's say. And then now I need an insert edged here, right? I can do this. And I know if I tap, I'll get different polygroups. Too, stuff like that and then once again you would now pull this and I could probably say let's see flat let's do poly loop and flat and then there but I don't want it to attach though there right and then now this is a collar that you want to start getting it so I didn't get all of it so this is where I would take the second to in essence highlight the faces that are important to me and then just pull down on that and then there you start getting your collar that you want right so when you go to divide and right now thickness is on you start getting that and then now I probably say I don't necessarily need maybe all of all of these right so I can get rid of edge loops I can do something more like that right put the smoothing back on and then there's your collar now you're just now you just need to shape it okay so there's multiple ways okay so the weld point distance is is in essence the distance of how long how far out how far out should each vertex cast out to find another vertex so think about it as like fishing like like fishing fishing like you throw out your cast right and then you got to reel in the fish so if there's bigger fishes you know 100 feet down in the water compared to 20 feet in the water you need to reel out at least 100 feet of line to catch that fish so it's the same thing with that weld points and that weld distance is you're telling it how far to each vertex point to cast out and find a vertex point to weld with. Okay? Does that make sense for you? And there's other ways to make collar. People, they get, get a little bit clever with this. Do it in two pieces. Why does it have to be all connected? Because you're going to be able to connect it down the pipeline. So what I mean by that is, this top part would be its own mesh, right? And then this is its own mesh. That's that's what some people, and then you connect them, and then now it's flowed, because it's connected, and then you just Z-remesh it, there you go, okay? So there you have it. So um, my printers are, I have a Form 2 over here, and then I have an artillery side Sidewinder X1 over here. So this is an, 
This this side is an FFF printer or Fusion printer or FDM if you want to go that route. Okay, FFF. And then I have the resin printer over here. Okay, so there you go. So in essence, you guys can see this is kind of why I was making what I'm making for her, right? I want, that's what I'm trying to do here, see? And then you're gonna be able to see that's already looking cool, a happy mistake here of the other versions of this coming into play. So there's the clean one. There's another version of it. We don't need all of these. There. Stuff like this. Right? So in essence, it's kind of like her collar, but it's going to be some kind of design and mech, most likely. I don't know. I'm still, I'm, like I said, I'm still playing around, coming up with this idea that I want to have happening to her. Okay? It's still too complex for you to understand the uh, welding points you're saying. Um, I I don't I don't think I have anything that's gonna really. Here, uh, I don't know what we could use. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that we can use. Okay, let's say let's get something real close. Let's say something like this. Okay. So these all have different distances. Like we've got stuff here with different distancing. So all the casting is, again, all this is, this distance is saying how far out, because we have to analyze this, the surface, right? We got to know whatever, where every vertex is in space. We got to know. And then we got to know, does this point weld, does this point here weld with this point up here? Like, so you see that distance right there? That's, that's what that is. Okay. So in essence, if you look at this, that's a point right here. There's a point of topology there. There's a point of topology there, there, there. So you see this and this gap is bigger than this gap and this gap. So that's what this is doing. So if I click this, you see nothing really welded. Look, nothing welded, okay? Because the distances are too much, okay? In fact, only that's the only edge right there that welded, okay? So if you start bumping up, the welding distance, right? As you go up and up and up, more and more stuff will start to weld. That That's what this is doing, okay? So this is a overall slider that's just looking for things to weld with. That's all. And there's still, a, like, there's a tolerance. We're not going out infinitely and looking because then you guys would just weld everything together. It's like this in the Z-Modeler. So you see there's stitching. It says two points. An endpoint is like saying I want that point to weld with that point. See, that's by hand doing the weld. Okay, this is a global setting. So if I started here, let's slide a single edge. Let's make some of them real close to each other, and then let's make this one real close to each other as well, and then let's make this one right about there. Right. So now this is a lot closer than that one, and a lot closer than that one. So when you hit weld points. You're looking to see what welds. So if you start going up in tolerance, that's what you're trying to find is what will weld for you. That's it. That's all it that's all that's doing. So here we even might need to it's all flat, so right? That's that's what this is doing. Especially rated. Right? So if if this Okay, and now uh, let's insert a single edge like there. Let's insert another one there, let's another one there. Let's take this and let's just actually, let's not, uh, let's just do this. Uh, let's have a little group of borders. Okay, so now this is actually two pieces. See how it's two pieces? Right, so this is where the welding this comes in. And so now if you click on this weld point, so we'll start back at the default you weld your points, some points over here just got welded. So when you do this, see it's all welded back together now? That's what it's doing, right? So this just saying how far to go look, right? So right now, let's see, do I have, yeah, I'm back to, the, these points where they look like they're in the same spot, but they're not, right? Because you see, look, if I make it an edge, it doesn't continue on the paint. 
right? So this, even though it looks like they're moving, they're two separate pieces, right? So if you look through here, right? I want this parts in here to not be welded. So you see that? See, they're not welded. And then see those are welded and those are not. So that's where this comes into play. You click and then it's trying to say, well, the distance from this and this is so far. So then there's a tolerance sliding here by global. See there, they all weld it, but see now it's too strong. So you got to find the right setting there. That one was right. See that just welded for you. Or you do what I was just doing with Z modeler, right? Which was doing it by hand. Okay. So you just click on that one. Whoops. one and edge loop click on that point then click on that point and then now they're welded okay there you go that's that's pretty much what weld, weld points and solders is doing no I'm not gonna dynamesh no you don't need the dynamesh to make it ready for 3d printing that's a misnomer you don't need that okay all right so Again, this stream is all about her. We didn't get, I didn't get as far because I did a lot of, I did a lot of these today a little bit in a way, right? Burr, 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 tangents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this out. And then next week, I'm going to try and get through, let's get all the armor made. And then we're going to clean all the armor up and then really position it where I want so that we can start making all these other elements that I want to put on her. Okay. So, because there's definitely more stuff that I want to give her. And I might, I might do a combination of this where there's some armor and then some tough and the hard leather. I think that might look pretty cool. So, like, this will be the hard metal stuff. And then I'll do some other elements that uh, look more like a hard leather. And maybe that's how I'll connect all this stuff. I don't know. We're going on the journey together here, people. We're on the journey together. Okay. So, unfortunately, I get going. But is there any questions that you have pop up? Right now's the time to ask. Here, I'm gonna save this out. And I'm gonna call this Vampire Girl number four. Right, so you can see some reference I have in there. So I like to save in iterations. Save, and there we go. Right, and again, our, our goal in this project is I'm going to show you in ZBrush how we make a miniature. And we're going to think about stuff I've already done. What I'm doing already is going to start causing problems. This kind of stuff is a big no-no, right? This kind of stuff. I want this gap to be overlapped completely. Okay, because I need to print this. And then I'm handing this off to Scott at Miniac, right? So he's got to be able to paint it. It's got to be ready for 3D printing. So we need, I'm going to make the rest of the armor. Then I'm going to go through and just make sure everything is set where it needs to be. I've got the overlapping that I want and then continue on with other features. But my first goal would be got to get this armor made for her, right? That's number one. But you definitely do not need to dynamesh. No, that's not necessary. Because you're going to decimate it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay. The adapt change in Z Remesher, yeah, I'll explain it to you real quick. Uh, let's just grab this guy. I'm gonna divide it up. Uh, we'll delete this. And I'm gonna dynamesh this so we don't have clean topology. Let's give him some, there. So we have something like this, he's closed off. Okay, we'll make this all one poly group. All right. So in Z Remesher, adapt is part of the power of Z Remesher and its code. It's a changing, adapting the topology based upon the sculpt. Okay. So what this is going to do is analyze and say, okay, well, there's eyes here, right? So there needs to be a flow that follows here. But the size of the topology needs to be probably smaller here to get this flow right than, say, on the top of the head. Like, to get this flow, I don't need really tight topology. In here, I need tight topology. Okay? So, 
when you guys have adapt on and working with this slider, all you're telling ZBrush to do when you go to Z Remesh this, it's saying, okay, go analyze the actual sculpt and make sure when you remesh this and have the flow in places, you go ahead and change the size of the topology, which to you want Z Remesher to make sure the like eyes and the ears and the mouth and nose are being maintained as much as they can with the reduction of the polygons. Right? So when this is done, you'll see what I'm saying. So there you go. So now, see, you can see the polygons here, and especially up here on the head, are a lot bigger than, say, what's around the ear, right? See, these are more of a rectangular shape. And then, see, these are starting to get a different size. That That's what Adapt's doing. And then what the slider is saying, what's the ratio you're allowed to have? So if I grab, say, just to give you a generic, an idea, okay? By default, we are telling ZBrush, okay, what is going to be the difference are you allowing from this, right? So in essence, I'm giving the topology this range. So you either can be a perfect square or you can be a little bit more of a rectangle. Okay, so let's say, let's say that one's at 50%. Okay, let's say that's the 50% setting. Okay, and then now let's say, okay, and now let's say this. This relationship is putting the slider at this slider, adaptive slider, all the way at, uh, towards 100. Now you're allowing a way bigger range, right? And then the opposite would be this. So this would be putting the slider all the way down to 1, where you're pretty much telling it you're not allowed to have a big range. Every, every single um, face has got that okay does that make sense so this is what the slider is controlling what kind of range are you allowing in the topology with the adapt so then when you go remesh this okay if you got this slider turned down a lot lower you're now going to get mostly try as much as again closer to quads faces there's going to be less and less rectangles and smaller topology it's going to be more equally distributed same size stuff Okay, and if you go higher, then you're allowing even a bigger range, which means if you go higher, you're going to get more topology. This one I'll probably get, result will have less topology because I'm not letting the remesher have willy-nilly as much with the adapter. Okay? Did the stream go off? So you can see, look, everything's relatively now. The, see, the ears aren't as, as dense. So you see everything's starting to get closer to the same size now. So that's what it does. Okay, we got to get going because we got other people coming up and uh, I got to get into some other meetings and things like that. But thanks for watching. Uh, let's see, next week I will be going. Uh, I will be posing the figure as well. We'll be doing all of that for sure. Uh, next week, we'll be streaming again next week. So we'll be continuing this process. So same, same bat time, same bat channel. Next Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You're going to have me streaming away. Okay? So, thanks for coming along the journey. Uh, this is going to be a fun project with Scott. I'm looking really excited to see what he, he's going to paint this up to look like. And again, I'm just starting. we got to think about printing so and miniatures. So, there's going to be... I'm going to have to exaggerate things as well. Right? i got to stop thinking living in this world. She's not going to be that big. So... There's all that stuff I got to do yet. But first, right now, I'm just trying to map out my armor. And then I'll worry about, like, thicknesses and things like that. Bring in the 80s, baby. Shirt and all, too. Yeah. All right. So, this has been Paul Gabry with Pixelogic. Thank you for watching my stream, How to 3D Print and Paint Miniatures with Pixelogic and, and Miniac. So see you all next Friday, hopefully, 11 a.m. Again, Pacific Standard Time. Keep tuning in to ZBrush Live. we got more people going today and the next few days. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening, afternoon, morning. This is Paul.